All right, and looks like we are live. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Daily Digital. My name is Junior, and this is the number one show where I keep you all well informed of what's going on in our digital world. Uh, today's date is Friday, August the 19th, and just have a few things here to talk about with you guys today. And as it is Friday, we have Flashback Friday. Um, one of the first things that we have to talk about is actually two stories that involve the same thing, which is exoskeletons. The next thing that we have to talk about here is about concrete and how concrete has uh, made advancements in technology itself uh, to become what it is today. And then the last thing that we have to talk about is Audi. Audi, the car manufacturer, is getting more into the digital <laughs> is getting more into the virtual slash digital space. So stay tuned and we'll jump right into it. All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, so the first story that I have here today about exoskeletons, actually one that I found uh, yesterday. So yesterday we talked about a gentleman who was a quadriplegic. Uh, he used to be an indie car, um, race car driver, and he was able to start driving again. If you'd missed that show, be sure to go back and check on it. Um, just one from previous day it was Thursday, August 18th or whatever. Um, but today's show is about him again, but it's not just about driving. Uh, he is not actually able to walk. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play a YouTube video. I'll probably do like a bit of an overlay because it's, it's like a five minute video. Uh, I don't think I'll play the whole entire thing, but I just want you guys to kind of get his story. It's a practice day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Arrow McLaren team owner Sam Schmidt is standing trackside. We said standing. Sam Schmidt is a quadriplegic. When you were in that bed 20 some years ago, flat on your back in Florida, did you think this was possible? Not even close. Yeah, we didn't know if I'd make it the first week, <laughs> let alone the first month. Schmidt was then an Indy car driver. A crash in Orlando left him paralyzed from the shoulders down. Everybody thought it was a saying that why would I go back to a sport that put me in a wheelchair? I've been racing since I was five years old. It's all I ever want to do is compete at this place. And that to me is what's kept me alive for 21 years. We first met Sam five years ago. And truth be told, we had our doubts. Could a man in his condition actually drive? Yep. Three years later, he brought his much improved high-tech car to New York. We rode with him through Manhattan traffic from Harlem to Rockefeller Center. He has since raced up Pikes Peak and competed in an amateur race. What if, wondered the people at Aero Electronics, they could get Sam walking? When they presented you with the idea of let's try to do this. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on that real quick. I mean, like I said, it's just amazing how uh, he's gone from being a quadriplegic to now being able to race in amateur races, indie car races. That's, that to me is just amazing. Uh, and as you can see here now in the video, they're actually just kind of putting together his exoskeleton uh, that's going to actually help him walk. Uh, and I think the thing about it is that last episode yesterday, I mentioned about, you know, that that sense of normalcy and everything, uh, being able to live life how you once did, um, which is why I want to kind of jump to a later part of the video. I think it's going to be, um, yeah, about right here. You can kind of see him walking as a professional race car driver, standing up, getting out of the wheelchair. It's been a big spring for Sam. I saw you coming onto this cart, and I kept looking at your empty wheelchair. What's it like for you to leave that behind? It's amazing, and I think I'm ready to hang a four sale sign on it. <laughs> but most important of all was this moment. Yes! When he danced with his daughter at her wedding. Yeah! I'm surprised I have any tears left. You know, it's been a... It's been a in a wild month. And the wild spring continues for Sam. I'll tell you. Yeah, so that's why I want to kind of share that with you all. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, again, it was a wonderful thing for him just to be able to drive his wife on a date uh, after so many years. But, you know, one thing I didn't even think about is, you know, how does that affect the children? Like, how does that affect your kids? Um, and he was actually able to walk and not only walk, but dance with his daughter uh, on her wedding day. So that to me is just, um, it's just amazing. It's really, 
really amazing. Um, and so now for this next episode, <laughs> for this next uh, article, I would say uh, we are jumping over into a bit of a different um, direction, which is also really, really, really amazing. So we have here robotic exoskeleton gives snakes their legs back. <laughs> corrects evolutionary mistake. Uh, number one, I don't think that was a mistake for the snakes to lose their legs. I, I mean, to me, snakes remind me of like um, gators, alligators, crocodiles, and stuff like that. Um, but I guess this um, uh, this one guy, okay, what's his name? Uh, Alan Pan. Um, self-titled snake lover he actually developed something that actually and it's basically an exoskeleton that gave snakes their legs back I'm actually just gonna play the video instead of talking through it uh, they have a video here and that's that's him there uh, and then I guess, I guess he's again the snake lover um, click on that let's see if we can go full screen with it I'm Alan Pan, and I'm an animal abuser. It's what a lot of people would want me to say, because in my last... And I'm not actually going to... This is like 9 minutes, 52 seconds, so I'm just going to go over to the part where it actually looks really cool, um, which is like near the end where he actually like shows a snake walking in it. All right, so probably about right here. She doesn't seem to want to. I do wonder if that has anything to do with the, the servos being on, because they do jitter a little bit. Because they're very sensitive oh, right. to, to like vibrations, right? This will be off now. My fate was now entirely in this snake's hands. That's backwards. You're going in backwards. We'll give it one last go. Yeah. Oh, she's zooming now. This is actually incredible. Like, the fact that she's getting more comfortable with the legs. Oh, yes, 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 yes. She totally wants her legs back. Tongue's flicking, good sign. And then we just start the walk. Look at that. I cannot believe this is working. Oh my god. You did it, man. This snake is like totally comfortable. <laughs> hey. Hey, you like you like having these legs? You like having your legs back? I finally had proof that I really do love snakes. She's going with it. That is crazy! The snakes want their legs back! Oh, bonk. So what do you think? Do you think this snake enjoys having legs? No, I think she for sure does. That's it was cool. totally riding those legs. And there you have it there. Um, he gave snakes their legs back. Again, I'm not sure if snakes actually want their legs back. Um, again, this is all for the fun, all for the video. But it's actually quite interesting, you know, once you put thought into something, what can you actually do with it? Again, technology has made advancements in pretty much every industry known to man. Um, and it's not even surprising to see something like this actually work. Uh, and then I also have another video for you guys to check out in which uh, I, I kind of just let you guys check it out on your own. Um, it's just really all about, you know, different exoskeletons that exist around the world, which is this video here. And again, I'm not going to play it. I'm just going to like zoom through. Um, there's that exoskeleton, that one there. Um, and really, it's just all about the 14, what's it called? 14 advanced exoskeletons giving humans super strength and endurance. Um, of course, they want to play an ad. So, yeah, so the next thing that I have here today is going to be the uh, Flashback Friday. Flashback Friday is going to be all about concrete and the history of it. And as you can see here, uh, I have a great article from it, and it says basically concrete has stemmed from even the Great Pyramids of Giza uh, to smart sensors for testing concrete temperature uh, and maturity. Uh, and they put together a notable events and discoveries in the history of concrete. This is geotechscientific.com. And uh, I guess they're dating concrete back all the way to 6500 BC. Um... In the UAE, the earliest recordings of concrete structures date back to 6500 BC by the Nabete traders in the regions of Syria and Jordan. Uh, they created concrete floors, housing structures, and underground cisterns. 3000 BC, Egypt and China 
Um, or in Egypt and China, Egyptians used mud mixed with straw to bind dried bricks. They also used gypsum mortars and mortars of lime in the pyramids. The Great Pyramids of Giza used about 500,000 tons of mortar. A form of cement was also used in the build of the Great Wall of China around that time. 600 BC in Rome, although the ancient Romans weren't the first to concrete or to create concrete, they were the first to utilize its material widespread. By 200 BC, the Romans successfully implemented the use of concrete in the majority of their construction. They used a mixture of volcanic ash, lime, and seawater to form the mix. They then packed the mix into wooden forms and once hardened, stacked the blocks like bricks. Uh, after more than 2,000 years, the Romans, Roman concrete structures stand tall due to the ingredients colliding with earth uh, natural chemistry. Uh, I wonder why like we don't use the same the same ingredients like whatever. Uh, technological milestone. During the Middle Ages, concrete technology crept backwards after the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 AD. The technique for making pozzolan cement was lost until the discovery of manuscripts uh, describing it was found in 1414. This rekindled interest in building with concrete. But it wasn't until 1793 that the technology took a big leap forward when John Schmitten discovered a more modern method for producing hydraulic lime for cement. He used limestone containing clay that was fired until it uh, turned into clinker, uh, which was uh, which was the then which was then ground into powder. He used this material in a historic building of the Eddystone uh, Lighthouse in Cornwall, England. In 1824, Joseph Aspidin invented Portland cement by burning finely ground chalk and clay into the carbon dioxide until the carbon dioxide was removed. Aspidin uh, named the cement after the high quality building stones quarried in Portland, England in the 19th century. Concrete was uh, used mainly for industrial buildings. The widespread use of Portland cement in home construction was in England and France between 1850 and 1880 uh, by Fran Francois Quagnet, uh, who added steel rods to prevent exterior walls from spreading. Uh, and that's all they have there. So the reason why this actually came up as a thing for me uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed that quick flashback Friday, the history of concrete. But the reason why they came up is because uh, I didn't know that they were making now concrete translucent. Uh, so I just came across this YouTube short video here. And oh yeah, let me play it real quick. So that was the video that I came across on YouTube. It's just a short and I was like, wow, that's actually really cool. And I didn't know that was made out of concrete to where they make it translucent and um, allow all those lights to kind of basically shine through. Uh, I would think it would be some other type of material, but I did a little bit of digging, did a little bit of research and started finding more about translucent concrete, which has actually been around for quite some time. Um... Yeah, translucent concrete or light transmitting concrete is an innovative facade material extensively used to clad interior surfaces and design uh, products with an edge of elegance. It is a concrete based material, um, concrete based building material with embedded nano optic elements that create a light transmissive surface. Uh, this property is attained by the uniform distribution of high numerical aperture plastic optical fibers throughout the concrete mass which support the smooth conduction of light from one end to the block of, of the block to the other end um, as you can see here I mean it's like pretty much see-through you can see silhouettes of bodies in it and stuff like that um, the history of it I guess it was translucent concrete has been spotted in a Canadian patent dating back to 1935 so it's actually been around for quite some time uh, with the advancement of innovations in glass and polymer-based optical fibers, the products, the production of translucent concrete began to service the markets in the 1990s. Um, the material was officially patented in 2021 by Hungarian architect Aron uh, Lasonsky. 
which is a traditional mix of water, sand, gravel, and cement embedded with plastic or quartz fibers throughout its mass. Within two years, the proposing idea, uh, Lazansky was able to produce the first block of Lictracon or light transmitting concrete, which was quickly adopted in countries like Italy, Germany, and China. Uh, so it has a little bit more about the materials there. A couple of images to show you guys. It has a whole manufacturing process. This is a really good article for you guys to get into just to uh, uh, just to learn more about it. Uh, they also have a couple of applications in which they are being used for. And of course, they have the pros and cons. Uh, so I'm just going to let you guys, I don't want to go too deep into it. Um, this is from the website Rethinking the Future, uh, re-thinkingthefuture.com. And uh, you guys can go ahead and check that out for yourselves. And so for the last thing that we have here is Audi. Audi, the car manufacturer. Um, again, this is a video that I'm going to play. It's about three or four minutes long. Um, so I'm not going to do too much talking on it. Just going to play the video and let you guys see what they have been up to. We drive cars daily, but do you wonder about the production process and what the future of it will look like? <laughs> Always walking around. Oh, that's crazy. Let's step into the future with Audi as they give us access to their factory for a first-hand look at the manufacturing process. As we enter the factory, we find workers and automated guided vehicles, AVGs, working in harmony. This revolutionary process by Audi is called modular montage. The advantage of this modular montage is that it allows for the need for many various pieces to be manufactured simultaneously. A central guidance logic system guides the robots as they perform their duties that have been provided by a human operator. At their stations, workers assemble components depending on individual orders, and the AVGs supply the stations with the necessary materials by the goods to person principle. We have a production strategy, we call it the 360 factory, in which we have four different goals. We have a lot of flexibility, 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 and attractivity. Audi uses the very latest virtual reality technology to collaborate on and test new ideas without committing any real world materials. The company aims to complete more of its designs in virtual reality and at minimal operational cost. Audi engineers from all over the world can work collaboratively in a virtual workshop to design and optimize the production process of future cars. Daten sind das Blut in den Adern einer jeder Fertigung. Und die Daten, die können wir natürlich über äh, Artificial Intelligence besonders gut nutzen, indem wir Data Analytics machen. The bodies of the cars are made of massive 1.8 miles, 3 kilometer long sheets of metal, delivered in ginormous 33 ton coils. A giant press hammers the car bodies into shape with 7,086, 7,200 tons of force. This process stretches the limits of what sheet metal can take, meaning cracks can be a problem. However, in the press, a mixture of cameras and a complex artificial neural network operates to detect the finest cracks in sheet metal and reliably mark the spot. Many of these and future innovations are courtesy of the Audi Production Lab, which is charged with harnessing the latest technologies for any aspect of the production process. Data analytics and visualization allow Audi to track energy usage and set informed energy-saving targets for each stage of its production process. Audi intends to produce its last combustion engine by 2033 as it joins the electric car revolution. Will you be joining the revolution by choosing to drive an all-electric Audi? All right, and yeah, so that was a, 
uh, actually a LinkedIn post from Interesting Engineering that I saw and I just want to kind of share with you all because uh, that is amazing. I didn't know, I mean, when it mentioned the artificial intelligence actually like detecting minor cracks inside some of these panels for cars and stuff like that, um, I didn't know they can really get down to the, I guess, minuscule level of detail, um, which is actually pretty amazing in my book. So um, yeah, definitely check that out. Not sure if anybody actually works for Audi. If you do, I would love to speak with you because uh, I'm really curious on how that whole technology works and everything. Um, and then, you know, again, in the comments, let me know what you guys think about all of these other videos um, or not videos, all of the other articles. I think majority of them was videos, uh, especially the snake exoskeleton. I'm really curious to know what you guys think about that one there. Um, and then um, I want to actually like try and keep up with the guy forget his name now I want to kill the guy with the Indy car race car driver um, and see what he's been actually up to as far as like you know advancements in some of this uh this technology for quadriplegics because he's he's kind of leading the way uh in my book as of right now I'm pretty sure there's other people who've been doing other amazing things that I have to kind of dig and find um but that's one of the uh that's one of the amazing things about some of this digital technologies that it's a vast world out there but it's a, it's growing every single day um so I hope you guys enjoyed this show. Please do hit me up in the comments. Check me out on all my social media channels. And let me know if you have any further questions or comments. Uh, if you have any articles that you would like to uh, share yourself for me to air on the show, definitely let me know as well. Uh, and if nothing else, you guys have a wonderful Friday. And I'll see you all tomorrow.